Hi, I'm Luke Hoffman with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. We're kicking off our statewide tour of all the bike shops and bike-friendly businesses across the state of Iowa over the next week, December 11th through the 15th, to find out how these bike shops and businesses are building community in your neighborhood. Join us. Hey, I'm Luke with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. Really excited to be here. We're on our Iowa Bike Shop Tour. Welcome, welcome Luke, welcome Iowa Bicycle Coalition. My name is Jeremy Lewis. I'm the executive director, the first executive director of uh, the Street Collective. We take donated bikes, we restore them, we give a lot away, and we also sell bikes at affordable rates. So we're not your sort of traditional bike shop where we'll actually do the work for you, but we consider it a sort of do it together ethos. So anybody can come here with any challenge they're sort of facing. If they're willing to get their hands dirty, then we'll give them the tools and the knowledge. They walk on in, and as you can see by looking it around, there's a lot of things going on here. So we have volunteers here, we have individuals that are working on their own bikes, we have staff here that are building bikes for a bike giveaway. We give away a about one bike for every two we sell. So last weekend we were, did a collaboration with Habitat for Humanity where we were giving bikes for all first time homeowners. We promised to give away uh, 65 bikes to kids that are on a waiting list and then one week later another 30 kids had signed up. So I know that there is a, an acute need for uh, getting kids bikes in this community and, and this is just a, a key resource to make that happen. I really appreciate what you're up to and we're going to do everything in our power to help share your story and lift that up and highlight it to other areas of the state where they can learn from you. So thank you for what you're doing. I'm really excited to talk to you. We're at Shields today. Can you tell us about who you are and what you do here at Shields? I'm Jen Bast. I'm our service shop lead. I basically um, lead our service shop. Um, we do all the bike, ski, snowboard, all the service work that needs to happen. We started actually doing some community cleanup to some of the mountain bike trails because that's where my uh, love is. And so anytime that we can get out on the mountain bike trails, be able to clean up a bunch of the trash, um, just kind of help out when we can. And then obviously with Rag Bry as well, we handed out snap koozies and just we're kind of there just having fun with everybody. So we hire several high school students. Um, as soon as they turn 16, they're eligible to actually work in our bike shop. So we actually have demo bikes that they can grab out because some of them didn't know that there was such thing as a mountain bike trail through the woods. So we give them a mountain bike and it's actually part of their training curriculum to actually hit every mountain bike course in the Des Moines region and be able to come back and kind of tell me what's the difference and some of the jumps and stuff like that. Obviously being a female in the bike shop area, I really want to reach out to that female community and just empower women to be able to teach them, hey, why did you get a flat and how can you fix that yourself or why is your derailleur not working right? They don't know unless somebody teaches them. Anything the Bicycle Coalition could do to support that effort, we're here and we got your back. So awesome. thank you. Thank you very much. Tell us about yourself and about your shop. Yeah, thanks. So my name is Jeff Hoobin. I'm the owner of Chain and Spoke in Des Moines, Iowa. We're a coffee shop and bike shop located on the Ingersoll Avenue. Coffee and cycling is two things that really have a long history together, and we're looking to bring some of that uh, to the Des Moines area. So we still opened up earlier this year. Uh, we put a real focus on high quality coffee and high quality bicycles and then giving the opportunity for fans of both of those to interact. And if you're just into coffee and not into bikes, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but maybe you'll catch the bug by getting a chance to look at some of the beautiful bikes that we have back here on display. We have people doing business meetings, first meetings, um, but then also doing planning on cycling related events or other things in that community. Gives them a chance to meet over a cup of coffee, but you never know who you're gonna run into, who knows someone else, who knows someone else, and then can actually make those things happen. Our lineup is killer. We put a high focus on production in the US, both doing handmade carbon fiber, steel, and titanium. Uh, but then we have Orbea from Spain, which is one of the oldest manufacturers around. We don't carry much, but what we do carry gives the customer a chance to make it their own, whether it's custom paint, custom finishes, and allowing people to ask questions. Um, a lot of conversations we have start with, well, this is a dumb, there's no such thing as a dumb question, especially with bike. They've changed so much in the past years. Thank you so much for having a conversation today. Thanks for stopping in. I'm good to see you, Matt. Good to see you. We had to stop by the Ragbri headquarters here today. Talk to us about the interconnectivity between Ragbri and bike shops and other bike friendly businesses that you partner with? Well, as you travel across the state, there are communities that you drive through that if you blink, you miss it. So it's those small hometowns that at one point in life, they were thriving. And as kids grow up, they move out and that, that's, it's dying. To be able to bring 
of, you know, our route through a town of 200 people that for one day they turned from 200 to 50,000 or whatever that looks like, it's pretty incredible for them. They want to show up more because they know this is their one shot to showcase their community, why they still live there and what makes it some, them so special. So I will find as many small towns to roll through and as long as they have the right committee and the right community behind them, they, they can pull it off. Can you speak to the economic impact that RAGBRAI has? If you look at the scope of what RAGBRAI is, we are a world event. You know, so I was thinking about a guy that came from Germany. So he flies from Germany, he brings his bike. I mean, think about all the stops he has along the way. You have towns selling out of pie and you hear that churches are making $16,000. I mean, that church will never make $16,000 ever again on a normal year because they're never gonna have that many people come through. Those riders find ways to give back. You know, when the fire department put, puts a boot out because they're raising money for oxygen tanks, that boot is full of cash by the time the day's over. It's a unicorn, this ride is tried to be replicated in other states. It doesn't happen because of the people of Iowa that pulled this off. So it makes my job easy as the director because I have extra family or teammates helping me out too. To say anything the coalition can do to support you in that effort, let us know. Thank We'd be you. happy to support you. Appreciate you. Hey, I'm Luke with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. How are you? Hey, Luke. I'm Bridget Exman, Assistant Superintendent here in Mason City School District. We heard about this really cool program that Trek has with the local bike shop and wanted to come check it out. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're pretty excited. We now have a mountain biking program for our students in grades five all the way through grade 12. We were only able to do that because of a great partnership that we have with Wayne Ski and Cycle here, a local shop, and the work that they did with Trek to get us bikes for all of our kids to ride in PE and also in our after school clubs. Like a lot of communities in Iowa, we're facing depopulation and we're trying to figure out how do we make this an attractive place to live, to learn, to work. So one of the ways that we believe we can do that is by connecting our kids to the awesome resources that we have in the community. This was a way for us to get kids on bikes, get them out to experience the great trail systems that we have, helping kids create a vision for a healthy and active lifestyle long after PE class is gone, give them ways that they can learn new things and be a part of a community. That sense of belonging is really critical as we think about how we make sure that kids come to school ready to learn. All of those things kind of converge in this community partnership um, and, and work to provide something that's been really exciting for our kids and for our community. I'm Luke with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. Matt with Wayne Ski and Cycle, nice to meet you. You know, we've been all over Mason City. Um, we started downtown, we moved out west, and we recently finished out this location downtown here. We're busy year round. Um, you know, we go from the busy, busy bike season, we move right into ski sales and winter business. And we started building our own trails here in, in Mason City, raising money to actually hire a trail builder to come in and get the process started. The city took notice of what we were doing. We wrote a Destination Iowa grant and we received it. I've joined forces with the school. We're gonna have rock solid building trails on our school system property. We have a school bike program that's super exciting to talk about. So that's where we have a little over 90 bikes that we've provided for our community. Wow. Intermediate, uh, middle school and high school kids all have the opportunity to get on bikes. You know, I've always been very involved getting kids into our into our sport, getting them off the couch, getting them um, out in our community. Anything we can do to support that, you let me know. Absolutely, thank you. Hey Ryan, thank you so much for meeting with yeah, me today. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your operation. World Bikes, we are established in 1974. I'm the second owner. Uh, I took over uh, about 17 years ago. Full service bike shop, sales, service rentals, heavily involved in the Iowa City community. Uh, we have uh, a large gravel ride that meets here on Monday night. Just last week we did a uh, ride out to do some uh, holiday lights uh, viewing. Had about 50 people show up for that. Farmers Market Valet's involvement with local schools. We're actually just uh, doing a gift basket project with one of the local schools to help families in need. So we're donating a bunch of bikes to that. You know, there's a lot of coverage in the bike industry and helping out the people that are already riding bikes. But we're trying to really cultivate a culture of, uh, of new riders and kids and families and facilities to be able to utilize the, the bikes that are going out the door. Thank you so much for doing this with us right. and letting Thanks, us yeah. take over your space.
Hey, I'm Luke with the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. Ben, thank you so much for having us out today. Absolutely. Tell us about who you are and what you do here. Albrex has been a part of Sioux City um, for about 100 years now. It started as a uh, Harley Davidson shop. Somewhere along the way, they started selling Schwinn's. Harley Davidson didn't like that, so they went with bicycles. That's really fun. And been primarily the only bike shop in town since. You can almost feel it in the bones of the building, yep. some of the history. It's just so Sioux City, I guess. Uh, we help you know, someone who's 75 that comes in and we'll talk about how they got their first bike here. And uh, that's my story as well. You got your first bike here? Mm -hmm. You did, that's really cool. How old were you? Probably nine. Nine years old, you yeah. came in and got your first bike. Yep, it was a little specialized rock hopper. It's just history kind of repeating itself, I mm -hmm. guess, with each generation. Anyone who's down and out, who is using the bike just to get by, I'm all the way up to um, people that are uh, very honed in on the hobby. In terms of the community that the shop is helping to build, there's the Siouxland Cyclist Club, which we have a few of those folks here today. Tell us about your connection with the club and maybe any other rides that happen in the area. Yeah, so they help out a lot with fundraisers for um, different organizations here in town. They just like having fun, they need their bike service, they come here, they often will let our mechanics know what maybe their ride is missing. If something's not properly adjusted, you're gonna feel it. Thank you, Ben, for all the work that you're doing. We appreciate it, and if there's anything we can do to help you and partner with you and support you, let me know. Thank you. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Hey, good to good see you. Hey, good to see you, Luke. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having us out here. I'm you really bet. excited to talk to you about the cutting edge research and some of the scientific applications of that research. Great. Well, welcome to the Driving Safety Research Institute, home of the National Advanced Driving Simulator. This is one of the largest driving simulators in the world here at the University of Iowa. But we study uh, driver behavior and develop technologies to prevent crashes, and especially with vulnerable road users like bicyclists, pedestrians, and so forth. So we look at next generation technologies to avoid crashes, but also understand driver behavior. How long does it take to send a text message? How long are your eyes off the roadway? And all those kinds of things can go into uh, the next generation of vehicle. And I think it's really critical that in all the technologies that we develop in lane keeping systems, forward collision warning, pedestrians and cyclists are a key user that we look at. It's a major public health issue. I hope we can get some legislators to yeah. agree with you. All right, thanks Thank so much. You.